Hey guys, welcome back to the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Mr. Sopa, which is the mnemonic that we use when we go through NRP resuscitation. So before we start with that, I just want to show you a few things, remind you guys to subscribe to my website and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me just have a few seconds to show you how to do it. So if you go to youtube.com, all you have to do is punch in Respiratory Therapy Resource Center, and then you can click on any of my videos, and in the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to see a little red subscribe button. You can click on the subscribe button. If you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll be up to date with all the latest information going on at the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. So the other thing I want to show you guys really quick is my website, respiratorytherapyrc.com. You can also subscribe here. This is going to be where I send out my emails and just kind of give you guys like monthly updates on what's going on at the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center, what's new, latest ebooks, latest videos, just kind of keeping you guys up to date. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin with Mr. Sopa. So originally with Mr. Sopa, I made an Instagram post, right? Because we use it all the time at work in the labor and delivery with the newborn babies, right? So I got a lot of positive feedback. So I made this short ebook to go with it. And we're going to go through the ebook. And if you want a copy of the ebook, just go ahead and click on the link in the description or above this video. And it will be emailed to you shortly after that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Mr. Sopa. So what does Mr. Sopa stand for, right? So it stands for mask, reposition, suction, open mouth, pressure, and artificial airway. So I wanted to make something short and concise for people to just kind of have the Cliff Notes version in the back of their head, kind of what they're looking for. So on this next page, we can go through each piece. So M is for mask, right? So you're going to adjust the mask. And all of Mr. Sopa is going to be going down the line each letter, right? If your patient is not saturating well or does not have a decent heart rate, right? So it usually goes hand in hand with NRP. NRP is a different class that you actually have to take before you get into labor and delivery. But Mr. Sopa is an acronym mnemonic that we use to kind of also go through specifically for respiratory status, right? So M is adjust mask, right? So before the baby is born, you should have already checked to make sure you have all four sizes of masks at the bedside. They don't all have to be in the warmer with you, but they should be very nearby in case you need to change the size of mask really quickly. Know the gestational age of the baby before the baby is born so that you can choose the most appropriate size mask, follow your hospital's policies and procedures, and assess that you have the correct mask size, right? So that is M, adjust the mask on the baby, make sure it's the right size if you're struggling to get a seal. Reposition, so that's the R in Mr. Sopa, right? Reposition the patient's head and neck, make sure you're in the sniffing position so that it just allows the air to go right into the lungs, okay? So that is reposition. Okay, so suction. So suction is the next step. Let's say your patient saturation is not coming up. This is what you would do next, right? So you can do bulb suction first, and then you can do the actual catheter suction second. You can suction the mouth first, and then you can suction through the nose if that doesn't work, right? You should also have your meconium aspirator nearby. It doesn't have to be in the warmer, but it should be nearby in case you have to do a meconium aspiration, right? However, nowadays, we're much more conservative with the meconium aspirator and with actually suctioning out meconium. We're starting to do that less and we're starting to just go straight to like PPV. Oh, open mouth. So it's kind of challenging when you're trying to position the patient in the sniffing position and then also open the mouth at the same time because you're kind of pushing up and bringing it down. So it takes some coordination, but after a while, you start getting the hang of it, right? You want to give them the best chance to have the amount of air going through the nose and the mouth, right? Because then you have double the amount of space to be pushing air through, right? So there you have it, like sniffing position and bring the chin down a little bit, okay? So pressure. Let's say you're going through all these steps of Mr. Sopa and nothing has brought up your patient saturation. You don't have as much chest rise as you would like, or maybe you don't have any chest rise at all. So what would you do? You would increase the pressure, right? So if you're using the Neopuff, which is what we use at my hospital, some hospitals have it, some hospitals don't, you would go up on the PIP, right? So you increase the pressure. You always start at a PIP of 20 and a CPAP of five. So 
Now you have that option to go up to a PIP of 25. So you go up to 25 and check if you have chest wall movement and see if the patient starts to breathe. See if it's enough. Continue rising on the PIP. Please be aware of how much PIP you are giving and you shouldn't go past a certain point of PIP. We say about 40 would be the, the max. But I've never had to go above a PIP of 25 so far working in L&D. So really with the pressure, I would say really make sure that you did all of the other steps really effectively before you start really increasing the pressure to 30, 35, 40. You want to make sure all those other steps were done very well. And because we don't want to give too much pressure to put our patient's lungs at risk, right? But again, if you have to, in order to get chest movement, then yes, follow your hospital's policies and procedures regarding the PIP amount when you are doing Mr. Sopa. A. So A is artificial airway. So let's say you went through Mr. Sopa, you got through all of the steps, you did them multiple times, you already changed out the mask, you repositioned the head, you suction multiple times, you increased the pressure, you know, you've made sure the mouth is open and just nothing is working. You can try maybe having another person do it or calling another RT, but at that point, you guys should really start thinking about artificial airway, uh, either an ET tube or an LMA. And sometimes that happens where you may need to have an artificial airway. Usually it's not going to be in like a term previously healthy baby with no diagnosed issues. A lot of times based on the mother's history and the patient's history, you're going to kind of already be prepping for intubation for certain types of diseases and illnesses that you are going to know ahead of time. So usually artificial, when it comes down to artificial airway, sometimes you already know, okay, we're just going to go straight to intubation for this patient, right? But if you're going through Mr. Sopa on an otherwise previously healthy patient, then, you know, once you get to artificial airway, you know that you already went through all the steps of Mr. Sopa once, maybe twice, maybe other people stepped in to help you with the mask and whatnot. So then you reach artificial airway and then you have the ET tube option and the LMA option. So this is gonna be the ebook that you get. It just has all of these things. So if you guys want your copy, all you have to do is click on the link in the description or click on the link above this video and you can have this emailed to you. You can go to my website and it will automatically email this to you. It's just a quick like refresher, right? So, and it just kind of gives you a point of reference when you're starting in the NICU or starting in L&D. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my website so I can keep you updated with all the other things that are going on at the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. So have a great day and until next time. Bye.